What if I told you every time you're pulling a weed, you actually may be harming your soil and the plants surrounding it? Today's video, we're going to use science to discuss what weed pressure is and competition is in cases where you may actually want to leave the weeds because it's heavily beneficial, all using science, of course. Weeds, simply put, are plants that are growing in a space where we don't want them to grow. And yes, they can detract from the water and the nutrients that a plant needs to thrive and survive, but they also can be beneficial by helping with soil structure and actually attracting pollinators. Not all weeds and not all situations warrant the actual removal. In 2001, there was a meta-analysis published in Agriculture, Ecosystems, and Environment, and it found that moderate weed presence had minimal impact on yield of home gardens when competition was low. This down here is a great example of minimal weed presence. But 2020, in Weed Problems, there was an article published that actually showed that the presence of pigweed or just any sort of excessive level of weeds reduced the vegetable populations by 40%. So what's going on? What situation is it beneficial and what situation is it not beneficial? Well, it doesn't actually just come down to the volume of weeds comes down to a lot of different factors. For example, deep taproot weeds such as dandelions can help with water infiltration, aeration of the soil, and just overall cause fissuring and aggregation in the soil, which means reduced compaction. Weeds like clover or purslane or chickweed are great examples of cover weeds, also known as a living mulch, which benefits both water retention, soil erosion, and microbial activity in and around the rhizosphere. Nature Plants published in 2019 that the weed coverage helped greatly enhance the microbial diversity in your soil system when you left these ones behind. If you see low-lying weeds that aren't interfering with the sun capture of surrounding plants, you may choose to actually leave those in place. The only time you would remove them if they're causing some sort of overcrowding, but Generally, with these lower hanging weeds, the root systems aren't nearly as competitive enough to interfere with a tomato's taproot, for example. Now, when weeds are a serious issue is when they are invasive weeds. Sometimes we also call them noxious weeds, which are invasive weeds on steroids. The reason for this is because they do compete for sunlight, water, and nutrients. They can also harbor disease. 2017 Review in Crop Protection found that weeds increase the risk of aphids and thrift infestation when left unchecked. So example is a bed of lettuce can be very negatively affected by levels of sow thistle in the space, and that is because of aphids. This doesn't even mean the sow thistle needs to be in the same bed as the lettuce. If it is anywhere in the vicinity of your lettuce, it can cause issues. We want to remove known host plants. These can, can include things like sow thistle thistle, pigweed, and lamb's quarters. We also want to remove weeds in spaces that we have shallow rooted crops like the lettuce, the spinaches, that sort of thing, because they are going to compete very heavily for water and nutrients. Now, as with anything in nature, it's all about striking a balance. <laughs> what is that balance when it comes to weeds? Because ultimately, if you're pulling out a lot of weeds, you're causing a lot of soil disruption in the midst of the season, which in turn can affect your root health, your microbes, your water infiltration, just the, the list is endless. Here's the tip. You want to mimic Mother Nature's natural biodiversity. If the weeds are not competing for light or nutrients, then you want to leave them be. If they are somehow detracting from the space and you want them absolutely gone, you need to use a sheet mulch of some sort. This could literally be cardboard that is placed around the plant these hemp mats I've shown before on the channel, and then a mulch over top of that to hide it if you want. But we don't want to be just yanking a ton of weeds out willy-nilly. We also can weed based on age. So if we have an older weed that has an incredibly large taproot, we want to leave those in place. But if we weed early enough where everything's in kind of a cotyledon stage with a single little root, that is absolutely fine. That's not going to cause a lot of disruption in the rhizosphere below ground. That is the time to weed when they're tiny. Ultimately, as a gardener, your goal is not to have a weed-free garden. Your goal is to manage competition in a science-based way. Now, Geek Cree, you have to let me know in the comments down below if this is something that you do keep practice in. So you manage competition, but you leave some behind. If you don't weed at all, or even better yet, you weed the whole dang thing. I'd be interested to know. That is what Google says you should watch next, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!